Hey, what's up YouTube? I've received a lot of questions recently about whether or not people should take their drone with them as they're traveling. Uh, people asking about whether it's worth the hassle and what's the best way to do it. So I thought I'd make a video, 10 tips for traveling with your drone. So stay tuned and we'll check it out. So if you're new here, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you'll know when I make new videos about drones and drone technology. So these 10 tips are designed to help you optimize the way you travel with your drone. Now these are pretty specific to actually airline travel and traveling with your drone uh, either overseas or flying with it somewhere in the US, but a lot of these tips apply also if you're just driving somewhere. But let's jump into it with the first tip. So my first tip is probably the most obvious, but it's also probably the most important. And that is pick the right drone for the job. I love flying with my Mavic 2, and I have a Mavic 2 Zoom. It's quiet, it's got good flight time, it's got great range, and it's something I can pack down into a small case. A Spark, or a Mavic Air, or a Parrot Anafi, or uh, there's tons of other drones out there that fold down into a small case. I don't recommend trying to travel with something like a Phantom or an Inspire, unless you're doing a commercial gig and you're gonna be able to ship it or take care of it uh, in a different way other than the ways I'm suggesting, like carrying it on the plane. It just, it becomes pretty impractical. It's something you have to lug around with you. And I just love how small and high quality the drones have gotten these days. So for me, picking the right drone, and usually that is the Mavic 2 um, Zoom, is key. And so I suggest if you're getting ready to go somewhere and you don't own a small drone like that, see if you can trade with somebody or borrow one from somebody or go buy one. Uh, it really makes traveling a lot better to have a small, portable, lightweight, stuff it in your bag kind of drone. And speaking of stuffing a drone in your bag, the next big important thing is to find the right case for the drone to travel with. Now this is my case for my Mavic 2 Zoom. And it's actually a camera case. And I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check it out. Um, it's called the Mirrorless Mover 30i. There it is, that's, that's the setup that I have. I've got the remote control in here. I've got the charger in here. I've got the uh, spare props and cables up in a little zipper pack in the top. I've got um, three batteries outside of the drone that are all in lipo safe cases. And then I've got a depleted battery that I put into the drone if I wanna take a fourth. That way this charger will charge four batteries at one time. And so the drone itself sits in the bottom of the case in this other little subcase, which I'll also put a link in the description for. So it's well protected. This thing is pretty solid. And this whole bag, uh, this whole um, camera bag will slide right into my backpack very easily. It's very slick on the outside. There's not a lot of stuff to get caught on it. It's got a magnetic, um, magnetic tip down here that kind of locks into place with magnets. And then it's got a front pocket where you can keep all your cables, extra flat stuff like the uh, charging port, etc. So really, really love this case. I actually have a smaller one that I use to carry my um, GH5 in as well. As I said, it's the Mover 30i, and it's plenty big, and I really recommend it. A great case is essential if you're gonna be traveling. And actually, if I go out on a, on a, a drone shoot and I don't wanna take my whole backpack, I've got everything I need right in here to, to get out and fly. So it makes it really lightweight and portable. So my next tip for traveling on a plane with your drone is to discharge your batteries down below 50%. Now, understand that these batteries hold a lot of energy in them chemically, and the whole reason that they can be dangerous is because all that energy is stored, and if something were to puncture them or it were to have some sort of problem, that energy has to go somewhere, and that can result in explosions and flames and stuff like that. So by depleting them down to 30 to 50%, um, you're taking a lot of that energy out of the battery as you're traveling, so they're a bit more inert. It's just a good common sense kind of thing to do. It just means go out uh, the day before you leave or a couple of days before you leave, run them down to about 30, 40%, 50%, and then stick them in the lipo bags and then you're good to go. Uh, and then be ready to charge them as soon as you arrive at your destination. So tip three is discharge the batteries to under 50% before you fly. So the next thing you need to know is that you need to put your lipos into your carry-on bag. You can't check them into your checked bag. And I've never had any problem when I've had my drone, my remote, my batteries, and all my cables in this bag running this right through the x-ray machine. I've never had any issue with that. And that's what the airlines want you to do. They want you to actually carry it into the pressurized cabin so that it's somewhere you can get to it, you can see it, you can monitor it, and it's in a pressurized, safe environment, not down in the, the belly of the plane, which can get really cold or really hot. 
So be sure you carry on and account for the fact that you need to carry on all of your LiPo batteries. So the next thing to know is to buy some LiPo safe bags. Now these LiPo safe bags here are designed specifically for the Mavic batteries. They work with Mavic Pro, Mavic uh, 2, Mavic Zoom, etc. cetera. Um, they fit very nicely right into this LiPo safe bag. They have two little flaps that go down and then Velcro that closes up, and then they're nice and safe in there. This basically uh, prevents it from being able to ignite. If it were to have some sort of an issue, were to swell, um, get punctured for some reason, if it's inside this bag, it's not gonna get enough oxygen to be able to burst into flames. So these LipoSafe ba battery bags are really essential and a nice thing to do. They're not required, but I think if you have these, uh, you're less likely to have any issue getting the um, drone and all the batteries on the plane. So I highly rec recommend traveling with these. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna bring with you, and it's small, light, and easy to bring, is an external drive to make sure that you can dump footage as you go. Don't fill up your entire card and your internal memory on the drone and, and just keep going that way if you have a big 64 gig card in there and you, you know, take lots of shots. You wanna uh, back, back things up and copy things as you go. Both these drives make that really easy. And then that way also, if you save the cards, and you save it here, you have it in two places. So if you happen to lose your drone or lose a backpack or something like that, your odds that you'll be able to keep the footage that you got will be much better. Now the two drives I use a lot are this uh, Seagate DJI co-branded uh, drive. This is pretty cool because it has, actually has a micro SD slot built into the side and you can just plug it into your computer like you normally would. And it also comes with USB-C or USB-A. Plug it into your computer, plug the card directly into this drive, and this acts as a drive reader. It's not an automatic transfer to the drive, it just shows up as the drive itself, and then also the reader is a separate thing. So you're literally copying it directly from the reader built into the drive to the drive, and it's super convenient. It's ruggedized, it's got rubber around it, it comes with a uh, USB-C and a USB-A cable. So if you have a newer computer, the USB-C is great. And I've really enjoyed it. I've had no problems with it. And it's, uh, I think it's two terabytes or one terabyte, but it's plenty for co copying over all your footage as you go. Now this other one here is my Passport Western Digital. This is actually a powered drive that has a battery built into it and it has an SD slot uh, built into the side of it. And you can copy your footage using an app you know, that you connect to um, via Wi-Fi straight to this drive from the card. You don't need a laptop. So this thing is really great if you're traveling out in the field and you don't have a laptop with you or you're shooting with friends and you want to copy their footage as you go and you're sharing footage, you can stick your SD card and you can use a micro SD with a, with a uh, converter. You know, it's the big SD card that you put the micro SD into. Right here in the side, it'll copy it straight over to this drive for you and then you have it and you don't have to worry about uh, using a computer to get it. So everything gets backed up. The battery life on this is not great, so I recommend that you make sure it's charged before you take it out and do that. And by the way, this also has a USB-A slot where you can charge devices like your phone or anything that charges via USB. I don't recommend doing that, but in a pinch it's great if you're using your phone as your, um, as your display on your remote control. So this is a Western Digital. It is an SSD drive, so it's really fast. And this one is, just a standard drive, and it's it's uh, plenty fast too, but they're both really great, and I highly recommend having them if you're gonna be traveling with your drone. So tip number seven is uh, probably another pretty obvious one, but something that you might forget to do and you really should do before you go. If you're going to another country or another state or someplace you've never been before, get online and check the local drone laws there. Uh, for example, Norway was pretty loose with their drone laws. I never had any issues. Um, I, I didn't really see anything when I checked it that was different than the U.S. as far as line of sight and, and going above 400 feet, although they do it in meters, etc. It was all kind of the same. However, like in Germany, one thing I didn't know is you actually have to have your um, contact information and your registration on the side of the drone on a fireproof um, tin or metal plate so that in case the drone uh, catches fire, it isn't just on paper or a sticker that can burn up. So that's one thing that was really interesting. You also have to have proof of insurance in Germany to fly. So those are things you wanna take care of before you go over there. So check the local drone laws, whether it be state or uh, for a whole country. Go online, there's plenty of resources for it. And, and when you show up, if you do run into somebody who has an issue or, or you need to prove anything, you'll be educated and you'll be able to say, hey, I checked and I've done all these things and I'm good to go. And, and it shows that you made an effort too. So I highly recommend you check the local drone laws before you go flying somewhere else. 
So tip number eight has to do with charging batteries. Now, the nice thing about that is it's actually gotten easier uh, than it was 10, 20 years ago. The reason is these little transformers are designed to work with different voltages. So whether it's a North American 110 or a European 220, um, you can plug this directly into the wall and it's going to give you a, uh, uh, whatever the voltage is needed for the charger. It converts, That's a, this is a um, AC to DC uh, converter. And so all you really need to do is get an adapter either for the cable that goes on the end of this for the right kind of plug for the country you're going to be in or just get a, a different cable that plugs directly into here and plug it straight into the wall. You won't have any problem with these uh, transformers and converters. That said, on our recent trip to Germany, I found these little USB plugs to be very, very helpful. These things just plug straight into the wall and so many things power over USB these days uh, including your phone, including your um, a lot of drones and a lot of parts for drones. The remote control for a drone can be powered over USB. All of those things could be plugged directly in using one of these little USB plugs that go straight into the wall, much like we have in North America, but these are designed to work with whatever country there is. They also make them that are adaptable, but I find they're so inexpensive that it's easier just to buy the one you need for the country you're going to be in or the region you're going to be in and use that. I recommend getting a fast charge one and I recommend getting one with two or three or more slots so that when you do plug it in, you have the ability to plug in more than one device. But be sure you get those before you go because you're going to get a better deal on them than you will at the airport in the country you're going to. Next thing to make sure you do before you travel is to label everything, your batteries, your drone, uh, your charger, uh, have a bag tag for your, for your drone bag and your backpack and everything. And again, I know that might sound obvious, but it's really important to label it with not only your name, but also the international phone number, right? So if, if it's the US, it'd be 01, because uh, other countries have different international calling codes. So someone could actually dial you if they found your stuff. I like to put my email address on there too, just in case. And that way, if people need to reach me, if I lost something, they can reach me that way. But be sure you label everything, including your drone. And again, I told the story a few minutes ago about Germans uh, requiring that you have a, uh, a non-flammable, a flame-resistant label on the drone with your contact information and your registration information. That's really important uh, because, again, you want to follow the law. But also, if you did happen to have a flyaway or something like that, you want to make sure that people can find you and get your drone back to you if they are so inclined. Okay, so finally, number 10, the last tip for traveling with your drone is to look for local groups or individuals who fly drones before you go out there. I was able to connect with Felix from Quadcopter Guide when I went to Germany, and it was awesome. He and his wife took us around, showed us a bunch of things we wouldn't have seen otherwise. He knew great places to go fly. He knew the laws. He knew everything that we needed to uh, do and follow to have great, safe flights. You know, the internet is great for that, looking up a group on Facebook or on Meetup so that you can go actually meet with them in person and, and fly with them. Most people who fly drones love to share the hobby and love to meet with other people who fly enthusiastically. And you might just find that you make some new friends around the world or around the country if you go do that ahead of time. So I highly recommend before you go somewhere, see if you can find other people to fly with. So those are my 10 tips for traveling with your drone. I'll recap real quick. Number one, pick a small portable drone. Number two, find a good case that you can put that drone into. Number three, discharge your batteries to below 50% before you get on a plane. Number four, carry your batteries into the cabin with you, not in your checked bags. Number five, get LiPo-safe bags uh, to put your batteries in before you fly. Number six, bring a backup drive or two for your footage and back up along the way. Number seven, if you're traveling to another country or just another state, check the local drone laws before you go. Number eight, charge your batteries in another country using adapters. Number nine, make sure your drone and all of your drone equipment is properly labeled. And number 10, go make friends by looking up people and connecting with them. The drone community is fantastic, just like you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll hit the like button. I hope you'll subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. And I look forward to seeing your comments below on what you do when you travel with your drone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.